This video today is going to be about isomers and the different types of isomers you will come across in chemistry. We will talk about stereoisomers, the Kahn Ingold prelog, EZ isomers, cis trans isomers, and optical isomers. Feel free to skip to the relevant bits if you're in if you're not interested in the others or you understand the others and you're a bit confused on one topic. <clears throat> so let's look at stereoisomerism. Stereoisomers are compounds with the same structured formula but with a different arrangement of atoms in three-dimensional space. So if we take this example, CCl2 FCl C I2 Br. I'm just gonna make that clear on there that that is an ID. So if we just do the displayed formula, it looks something like this, Cl2 F Ci2 Br. But when we draw it in a three-dimensional way, we would have something that looks a bit like this, with a chlorine there, chlorine there, fluorine there. <coughs> then have an iodine here, bromine here, and an iodine here. So there's other ways that we can do this. It would be the exact same molecule if we put the atoms in a different space and just move them around a little bit. So this here just says, attached to this carbon there are two chlorines and a fluorine. Or we could put chlorine up there, but this time we could put the, the fluorine down here and the chlorine down here. And on this carbon, have an iodine here, an iodine here, and a bromine here. As you can see that this bond from one of my previous videos tells you that it's going uh, out of the plane, so towards you, while the dashed bond is telling you that it's going into the plane, so kind of away from you, Why the solid lines just mean it's in line with the page that you're looking at, in line with the plane. So on this molecule, this, this chlorine here is going into the plane while this fluorine here is coming out. Whereas here now the fluorine's going into the plane and this chlorine's coming out. So as you can see, it's the same molecule. However, the atoms have been rearranged. They have a different arrangement in three-dimensional space. And that's what a stereoisomer is. It's as simple as that. And you see I've done the same on the other carbon. So we've got a bromine going into the plane and iodine coming out. Now we've got the iodine going into the plane and the bromine coming out. And you can swap and change the atoms around. It's still the same molecule. It's just with a different arrangement. And if you were using pharmaceuticals, it may be a bit different in terms of function, but still the same molecule. So that's stereoisomerism. The next thing in isomers, we need to look at their Kahn ingold prelog. This will be used for E and Z and cis and tran isomers. So we need to know this first. And it's used to assign the priority of groups or atoms on a molecule. And it uses the atomic number, also denoted by Z. So we look at the atomic number of some atoms. So we have the atom here, and then we have the atomic number here. So we have carbon, it's atomic number six. Oxygen has an atomic number of eight. Fluorine has atomic number of nine. Chlorine is 17. Bromine is 35, and iodine is 53. Now, the atoms with the highest atomic number have the highest priority. So here we can see that iodine would have the highest priority, followed by bromine, and as it decreases all the way down to carbon, which would have the lowest priority out of these. And we can use the value of Z on any single atom to tell its priority. So I'll just do a quick example. If we have carbon, with four atoms bound to it. So we could have, uh, say, an OH group. We have a fluorine, we have a chlorine, and a bromine. Well, what we do is we look at the atomic number. So what has the highest atomic number here? Well, it's bromine with 35. So that has the highest priority. Followed by chlorine with 17, so that has the second highest priority. Followed by fluorine with nine, so that's the third highest priority followed by oxygen with eight, therefore it has the lowest priority. And that's how we do priorities using the Kahn-Ingold prelog. 
I will come back to this when we have a, a, a group with different atoms where the first couple of atoms are the same on each group and then they differ and we'll look at that as that's slightly more difficult but I would like to move on to E and Z isomers first. So E and Z isomerism is a type of stereoisomerism where different groups attached to each carbon of a carbon-carbon double bond may be arranged differently in space due to the restricted rotation of a C to C bond. Just a quick reminder on alkenes, please watch my video about the bonding in them if you're not sure. A carbon to carbon double bond is a sigma bond and a pi bond where they can overlap and form a double bond. Now, the only way to get a carbon to carbon double bond is this pi bond could break and flip 180 degrees to form another one. So I'm not going to draw the sigma bonds. I'm just going to draw the p orbitals again. And if you just look at the shading, I've only shaded it in not to represent phases, which somebody who's into chemistry may know, or at a higher level. This isn't to represent the phases of the orbitals. This is just to show that it was on top, and it's now been flipped to the bottom to reform another pi bond. And if you don't know about phases, don't worry. It's not relevant at A level. So here we go. We can have p orbitals overlap that, or they can break and flip 180 degrees. And because of that, we can get groups of different things. So we've got a carbon to carbon double bond. We could have group A, uh, group B, group C, and group D. Or we could flip one of them and have carbon to carbon double bond with group B here, group A, group C, and group D. As you can see, the pi bond would have broken and flipped 180 degrees, forming two different things. So look, let's look at an, ex at an example of this. Just want to go carbon to carbon double bond. Let's put a chlorine here, chlorine here, bromine on this carbon, and an iodine on this carbon. Well, how does Kahn Ingold prelog come into E and Z isomers? And what actually is an E and Z isomer? Well, to find out if the isomer is E or Z, we have to look at the priorities of groups. And bear with me because I will explain if it's an E or Z and why after we've assigned the priorities. So if you remember from the previous slide, which one has the highest priority? Well, if you looked at this molecule as a whole, it would be brome, uh, iodine. However, what we actually do with E and Z isomers is we split the molecule in half, hence this dashed line, and we do a half independently and then the other half. So if we take the left half first, we are just comparing fluorine and chlorine. We're not looking at the other two atoms. So chlorine has the highest priority as it has an atomic number of 17, compared to fluorine with an atomic number of two. So chlorine has the highest priority. Now if we do the right side independently, iodine has the highest priority with Z equals 53, and bromine has second highest priority with Z equals 35. Now what this shows is the two Highest priority groups are opposite each other and the two lowest priority groups are opposite each other. And this is where the E and Z come into play. If we have a Z isomer, it means that they're, they're the same side. And if we have a E isomer, that means the highest priority groups are on the opposite side. And as we can see, the highest priority groups are on the opposite side, meaning this is the E isomer. If I took a, a simple example, carbon to carbon double bond, say an OH group here, an iodine there, an iodine there, and an OH group there. Again, we'd split it in half and take each side independently. As they're both identical, we can only do it once. Well, iodine has the highest priority because it's Z equals 53, and oxygen has the second highest priority as Z equals eight. And because they're identical, it's the same way. As we can see here, the two highest priorities are on the same side of the molecule, meaning this is the Z isomer. And you can apply this to any molecule that's an alkene. Now, how do we remember E and Z isomers? Well, my teacher taught me that Z isomers are like a German pirate saying, same side, same side, and for some reason, to this day, years later, I still remember that, and it's helped me throughout chemistry. So imagine a German pirate saying, same side in a German accent, and there we have, Z means it's the same side. Now, I promised we'd come back to Kahn-Ingold prelog when we have groups with 
several atoms. So if we just talk about uh, E and Z isomers again, however this time we'll have a group something like CH2OH and we'll have something like CH2Cl, here we'll have CH2CH2OH and here we'll have something like CH2Cl again. So what we do is we've got to assign the priorities again and as it's an E or Z isomer we've just got to take each half independently. Let's look at the right half first. Well if we look at the bonded atoms to this carbon here, two carbons, they're exactly the same. Well how do we distinguish between the groups? Well what we actually do is we look at the first differing atom. So we've got CH2 and CH2, those atoms are the same so we can't do that. But the next differing atom is chlorine versus oxygen. Well, if you remember from earlier, chlorine has Z equals 17 and oxygen has Z equals 8. That means the highest differing atom has the highest priority. So the highest atomic number on the different atom has the highest priority, meaning that the one with chlorine in has the highest priority compared to the one with oxygen. Now we can do the same on the left-hand side. So we're looking at these two groups, well, the first three atoms are CH2 on both of them, and they're identical, so we then have to th take the next differing atom. Well, that's carbon versus chlorine. Now, carbon has Z equals 6, and chlorine has Z equals 17. Well, that's nice and easy. Chlorine has the highest priority, Y, carbon has the lowest priority. You may be thinking, oh, but I want to look at the oxygen because it's different as we in this example, the two carbons were the same. Well, no, because the first differing atoms are chlorine and carbon. So go carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, chlorine, carbon. So we look at that. We don't even have to look at those two hydrogens, oxygen or the other hydrogen at the end, as they're later on in the series after differing atoms. So from this, we can see that it's the Z isomer as the highest priority groups are on the same side. Now let's look at cis and trans isomerism. Cis and trans isomerism is a special type of EZ isomerism where there is a non-hydrogen group and a hydrogen group atom on each carbon of a C to C double bond. Well, it's, it's more simple than the E and Z, in fact. It's basically what you have is a carbon-carbon double bond with hydrogens on. Then you have some kind of group, let's say a chlorine and a fluorine. Well, what we do is we, we split them in half again and assign each half independently. Well, the atomic number of hydrogen is 1, which is the lowest atomic number you can actually get on the periodic table, meaning hydrogen is always going to have the lowest priority. We do the same with the right side, hydrogen always has the lowest priority, so fluorine will have the highest priority. This means that the two highest priorities are on the same side, which would mean it's a Z isomer if we're talking about E and Z. However, we're talking about cis and trans as a special type, therefore we don't call it the Z isomer. What we call it is the cis isomer. Now if we look at another example, we'll just use the same molecules, but the bond's been broken and flipped 180 degrees. Well, again, fluorine's going to have the highest priority and so is chlorine, because the hydrogens are on opposite sides. And what this means is this would be the <clears throat> E isomer if we were talking about E and Z isomerism. But again, as we're talking about cis and trans, as it's a special case, we don't call it by the E isomer. We call it the trans isomer. And cis trans isomerism is as simple as that. You're employing the same rules as you would for E and Z. However, you're talking about hydrogens, which always have the lowest group. And in my mind, that makes it a lot easier. Just remember to call it cis or trans rather than E or Z. That now takes us on to optical isomers. Well, an optical isomer is actually a non-superimposable mirror image. So if we can have a molecule like this, carbon, hydrogen, and usually when we're looking at optical isomers, we're looking at the three-dimensional representations. So you have chlorine, fluorine, and iodine. And when we're looking at optical isomers, they usually have four different groups or atoms on the central carbon you're looking at. And the central carbon, in this case, is called a chiral carbon because it's an optical isomer. 
and chiral carbons are basically a carbon with four different groups or atoms attached that has an optical isomer. So if we look at this and we reflect it, represented by this dashed line saying mirror, and this will be the mirror image of it that I'm about to draw, we can see that it would look something like this. As you can see, it's reflected chlorine, it's been reflected carbon, it's reflected hydrogen, fluorine, iodine. Well, a good way to represent optical isomers are your hands. Now, place your left hand on the desk or whatever is in front of you with your palm on the table and the, the, the top of your hand up with your, and your thumb will be on the right. And place your other hand the same but to the left, you see your, with your palm on the desk again. Well, you can see it's like a mirror if you draw, uh, drew a dashed line in the middle because your thumbs are, and your fingers are all opposite each other. Now they're non-superimposable, so now lift your right hand up, keeping it with uh, palm face down a couple of inches, and put it on top of your other hand. Well, you place them on top of each other, and they're not superimposable, are they? I mean, you can rotate it and put it on there, but without doing that, they're non-superimposable. Your, your thumb of your left hand is sticking out to the right, while the thumb of your right hand is sticking out to the left. They're, they're not superimposable. And that's exactly the same with these molecules, because if we went and moved this across, well, uh, I'm just actually going to change the pen color so you can see what I'm looking at. So I'll change it to black. So this molecule I'm now going to draw in black. Well, if we move that over there, we'd have hydrogen here, go to the chlorine. Okay, well, that, that superimposes. But now we're suddenly going to have a, an iodine here, a fluorine here and a chlorine coming down there. Well, they don't superimpose, do they? Because you've got an iodine where a chlorine is, and a chlorine where an iodine is. And you may be thinking, oh, why don't I just rotate it by 180 degrees? Well, if you rotated it from to 180 degrees, this molecule would now look like this. You've got your hydrogen still there. If you pivoted it through the hydrogen carbon axis, the iodine would come out of the plane, the chlorine would be the same, and the fluorine would come out of the plane. Now, if we can, if we compare these two, well, you can see they're not the same, are they? Like the iodine is now coming out of the plane, whereas in this molecule here, it was going into the plane. Fluorine's going into the plane, where it was coming out of the plane earlier. Now, that doesn't superimpose, does it? Because it's a different molecule. It's it's like if you if you took your left hand and bent, say, your middle finger or your index finger, maybe a bit easier. Uh, if you if you bent it so it's facing away from you, so your palm is facing away from you, and you got the other one, and you had your palm facing towards you, and your finger was pointing towards you when bent, you you put them together. They don't. If you put the back of your hands together, they're not the same, are they? And that's that's kind of what this is. We have to look at the orientation. Although the molecule looks the same. You're looking at the three-dimensional structure now. So if, like I said, we can see the fluorine, the fluorines are in a different plane. So fluorine on the right here is going into the page, while the fluorine on the left here is coming out of the page. So it's not actually in the same place, meaning they're non-superimposable mirror images of each other. That's it on my video of isomerism today, all the different isomers that you'll come across in chemistry at A level and AP. I hope this video has helped. Please share it with your friends if they're struggling on the topic. Please subscribe for more videos and like my video. Comment below if there's any topics you want me to cover that I haven't before. Thank you.